This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, welcome to Josh Has Autism. Hello. I hope that you're doing well and you're happy and healthy and yeah, all kinds of good, <laughs> everything good. Yeah. Everything good. Um... So Josh, there's one, there's something that I've um, witnessed, and I would love for you to elaborate what happens, how you work through it, and at times that you really can't, and you just have to remove yourself. Okay. Okay. There are times, um, and and this situation recently happened, where we all went to um, a restaurant, and. You got there, you, you came from work, and when I mean everybody, it was your dad and myself, the kids Madison and Connor, and Bug, and her fiancé, Kenny. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I had it situated where you were in the booth next to me, away from the kids. Yes. And dad was right across from us. Mm-hmm. All right, so it was a time when we were all there together, and... Um, there's something that happened that caused you to have to leave. Yes. You didn't eat your dinner. You didn't finish your, your, um, soda and you just had to go Yeah. and you let me know that you just had to go yeah. and this wasn't going to be okay. Right, right. Yes. I'm super interested in it. I am okay when that happens. So yeah, and you know that mm-hmm. it's never, you don't ever get. Uh, you don't. You don't ever have to. I don't get in trouble for for that. I was yeah, yeah. I wasn't gonna say trouble because like you're an adult, but <laughs> you never kind of go. We, you never hear this. Oh, why are you doing that? It's never it, that. It, it's, it's, it's it's not with that. Coming from me, it's not with that, that inflection. inflection. <laughs> right, I knew you were gonna say that. Yes, yes. It, it would be like, are you the okay? Cur- it's the curiosity. It's like, yes, yes. It's, not it's, the yes, um, and wanting to know that you're okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. It's re- <laughs> this happens, this situation happened, and I don't have any idea what went on. Right. And I think that it would be helpful if you could put into words why sometimes from outside of you, everything can look exactly like it has time after time after time after time. But this one time, it it was... Enough that you had to leave. Yeah. Right. Um, well, let me... Let me explain... Uh, normally, whenever that happens, it is a build-up of multiple, multiple instances in a situation. Okay. Um... With with this example that that you're uh, that you had brought up, mm-hmm. uh, I I had just left work, mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't even know that we were going to be going to a restaurant. Right, which I thought Dad had texted you earlier in the day, and I didn't know this until afterwards. Because when you called me when you got off work, and I said, "Okay, this is where we're going," uh-huh. told you, you know, reminded <laughs> yeah. you of where it was. <laughs> For you, you thought it was reminding me. Exactly. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a problem. So that's a problem. Something was sprung on you that you were not um, notified earlier in the day was going right. to happen. Right. And. So for anybody that's listening, they need to know that as well as you do, and as together as you've got it, you have to still have, to this day, you have to have notification. Yes. You need to know when something is happening ahead of time. Yes. And so that one was on me, because I thought that Dad had done it. Yeah. Because I know you well enough to notify you. Yeah. I think that I had texted you earlier in the day, didn't hear back, 
but I knew that whenever you have a chance, you'll see your phone. Hmm. But that was on me for not making sure that that was the case. Right. Okay. The, I believe the text you had, you had sent me was, hey, what time do you get off work today? <laughs> it could be because, it could be because I think that, and I was asking dad to follow through on that. Mm, okay. And so by the time that you called, I had texted you, I thought dad had talked to you, and then when you called, I was just reminding you of right. where we were meeting. Right. Right. Okay. So that's that's the first thing. Right. You're dealing with something that sprung on you. Right. Even, I, I want, even if it was a positive thing. Yes. Right. I, I will say this right now. The positives are slight. Whenever it's a positive situation, mm -hmm. it is it is slightly better than it than if it was a negative situation. Okay. That said, it's still stressful and everything. It, it still creates a situation where you have to overcome um, your first um, reaction, your first feeling, your experience, because you're. Mind I'm expecting to... one thing, and it's a, it's not what I expected, yes. Right. And that falls in the category that we've dealt with forever, which is you need things to... You need the routine. Yes. And you don't like sudden change. Right. Okay. And so that was the first instance in the situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next part was, uh, I got to the parking lot, but I didn't see anyone's cars there or anything. Oh. Apparently I'd driven right by it, by your car mm. when not realized it was yours, mm. but I called dad just to make sure where it was and, and uh, without really realizing that I was, had no idea if this was the right place or not. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, we're, we're at such and such. Uh, so I had, to, I had to ask him, the one right across from the... the grocery store? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, he's like, yeah. But you were there. <laughs> I was there in the you parking you didn't lot. see my car. Right. Okay. So, uh, I went in, mm -hmm. uh, I've obviously parked and, and uh, turned off the car and everything, but... Uh, and 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 also, if you didn't recognize, if you just went by and you didn't see that, you didn't register that it was my car, your sister's car wasn't there. Right, because she... Because she, she wasn't there yet. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, going up to the front door, I did see your car. Right. Because you were parked right in front of the entrance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um... So I, at that point, uh, I, I had finally realized that you guys were there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd gone in, and uh, you and you and Dad were there along with Connor and Madison. Yeah, if I could just say that one thing that I know about you is that even though you've gotten very good at taking the steps that you need to take to get out of a situation, mm -hmm. it still creates such anxiety and such a feeling of almost like, it's it, it, it seems like I can see the fight or flight. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Where those things that it might, for somebody, say for me, if I didn't know where we were going to meet, didn't know if I was at the right place, you didn't see your vehicle there didn't know whatever it it could be it could be frustrating it could just like a little blip for me like what where where are you yeah, <laughs> where it's, yeah. you know just try to figure it out yeah my experience in that is very different than your experience because that causes you to not feel well right um does it affect your thinking process? Does it start to deteriorate then? Why don't I continue Go on ahead, first? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, because I will address that. Okay. I'm um, just so curious about all this. Okay. Yeah. So, 
uh, I I uh, get there and I actually see uh, you and Dad and Connor and Maddie mm-hmm. uh, at, at the booth with a table mm-hmm. or two. Maybe I don't remember if it was one or two tables pushed up to the booth. Mm-hmm. And that that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whenever I got there, I I, I was saying uh, hi to everybody. Connor uh, was asking me, was saying, "You should sit next to me. Sit next to me." Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, and you know, you had said I, I I had saved you a spot here next to me, mm-hmm. so I told Connor, "Hey." Gammy said that she has a spot for me right now, so I'm going to go sit next to her. Hmm. Thank you for asking me. Because mm-hmm. he did. He, he was excited to see oh, me and everything. Yeah, that's cool. So, sitting where, where I was, that's fine. Uh, I'll, growing up, you know that I would have issues sitting in, in different places. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much so that at this point, it's almost become second nature Mm -hmm. to sit on the far right end of a of a side of a table because growing up my elbows would tend to (laughs) you know what's because i eat with my right hand and everything yeah yeah what's funny about that is that so i was on the booth that would be the opposite of that you That's had where me sitting your dad on the far, was sitting. You had me sitting on the far left side. Far left side. <laughs> but I was next to you. Yes. So that I moved over so that you would have room. Because mm. I knew that your elbow was going to be flying. <laughs> and you didn't even recognize that. It, you just did it because you're just, so used to it. Well, yes. If yeah. I'm sitting on your right side, I better give you plenty of room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So it's funny because I did recognize that. And it's the way that things happened. And I thought about you, about putting you over there, but, but I, it's just Connor was on the other side. I was on this side. Yeah. And I just made that thought, well, if I put you next to me on my left, you're further away from the kids. You won't have to deal with them. Right. And one of, that brings up, uh, that leads into my next point. Uh, the next instance, I guess. Okay. Um, for a little bit of background for this, though, mm-hmm. I love Connor and Maddie. Mm-hmm. I cannot be around them for very long at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's difficult for me to I don't want to say deal with them because I it, that's has mm-hmm. negative connotations I feel mm. but it it's very difficult for me to interact with them mm-hmm. uh, one, uh, Connor and Maddie constantly fighting with each other argue not fighting per se but arguing with each other and 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 if they're not arguing they're loud it's back and forth yeah you know? connor is on the spectrum but he's and he's also got ADHD mhm which means he has to work very hard to stay focused to be still is just almost impossible. Yeah. Um, and and he there's an awful lot of redirecting that happens. Yes. Right. And that's that's just the way that I put it. You know, he just he really pushes your limits. Very much so. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other issues I'm not really going to go into. Okay. Uh, right now, but. Connor is very expressive in his movements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
and his voice. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I'm trying to think of the right way to put this. Uh, Connor's natural voice level mm. is extremely loud. Mm -hmm. So much so that it's almost like he's constantly yelling. Mm-hmm. We do say an awful lot of times, inside voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... So just being around both the kids, just in general, if we were to do something, your preference is no kids. Right. That's just... And, and there's nothing wrong with that. that right. That's your preference. Um, when you are around them, you're good to them. Yeah. They, they really get on your nerves um, very, very quickly. Yes. And when they don't listen... Um, it starts where, for us, we our tolerance level is at a very, very different than yours. Us and, being you and Dad and everyone else? Or? Yes, and, and you, because, yes, yes, that's who I'm speaking about. Uh, you know, it, right. We can see that they are loud and bouncy and... They constantly wanting to try and get touch the other, everything. And, and they constantly touch, try and get each other in trouble. Um, yeah, I don't know that I would put it that way, but they are just always, they, some, they're learning how to express themselves mm -hmm. and, and, um, like, just kind of stand in their own space. And so as they figure, that's how I put it, as they figure their, themselves out, they're always pushing at one another and they feed off of each other. And so there have been times that I've described them as a shark when you know you toss something in the water <laughs> you toss yeah. the chum in the water yeah. those sharks are going to go nuts that's what it feels like sometimes it's like what <laughs> it's yeah. like it's it's this is crazy this is too much stop 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 yeah um right so i know what you're talking about my patience stretch further than yours when it comes to the kids yes so it makes sense that you prefer to not really be around them a lot. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, going back to his loud voice that he, uh, tone of voice, that, not tone of voice, uh, his vo uh, volume. That's it, thank mm -hmm. you. His loud volume that he uses for his voice. Mm -hmm. uh, if we remind him to use his inside voice, mm -hmm. I actually counted this at the restaurant. He got <laughs> he got two and a half words out, and he started to ra raise up the volume again. Mm -hmm. By the time he got to the fifth word, he was at his full volume again. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, so he's. Uh, He's really loud, and very, he's constantly moving around, and it's not that I have an issue with that, really, w with the moving around stuff. The loud voice, I really don't like mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of thing, mm -hmm. especially in a public setting. Mm -hmm. And... There are times, certainly, when we say, in, use your inside voice. To me, yesterday, was a day, he was in a great mood. He was happy. He was eating chips and salsa, yeah. which he loves. Mm -hmm. And um, and he wasn't, to me, he wasn't yelling. He was just talking. And it wasn't, it didn't feel inappropriate to me because he was not yelling. Um, so... It's well, the reason I say that is because I get what you're saying is that for you it was too loud it mm. bothered you and that's one of the things that calm 
Accumulated. 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 Thank you. I don't know. You ever use a word and then all of a sudden you can't remember how to say it? I did that the other day spelling something. Yeah. It was in my spell all the time. I'm yeah. like, how do you spell this? Your dad told me. I'm like, well, really? <laughs> it, was, it, was, uh, it was weird. Anyway, yes, so that it was one of the things that really got to you yesterday. Yeah. And my perception would not... I wasn't of help to you in that situation because he's not going to... I'm not okay with, with the kids being loud to a point where they disturb other people at other tables. Right. That was not the case. They were not that loud. They were not bothering anybody. Um, I disagree. Okay. I saw other people glancing over. Because well, he's a little jump, jumping bean, but... Okay, right, okay. Yeah, but, but, uh, right. Re, re, in any case, mm-hmm. he he was also... Every time that I would try to explain something or t- say something to you or Dad, mm-hmm. he would interject mm-hmm. constantly. Okay. And I understand that he's six years old. Mm-hmm. I understand that he that he doesn't fully understand interrupting yet. And I, I get that. It was right around this time that I, uh, after I was sitting down next to you and he was doing his thing. Mm-hmm. That uh, I forget if it was you or Dad uh, started started to ask me uh, what was what was going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not not. Oh, jeez, I'm trying to get this out right, but it's not. Uh, Well, while you get your thoughts together, I'll just say that what you've described so far is the setup for a horrible experience, (laughs) (laughs) right? And when it comes to Connor, I get what you're saying. He really, a, a lot of his behaviors get to you in a way that they get to us when we're having a really rough day, I'll say. Yeah. Right? Because... Part of them being five and six years old, they are learning to interrupt appropriately. They are learning, excuse me, they are learning to to listen, you know, find out what's on the menu, to make those decisions, to say please and thank you, to stay sitting down, to, you know, uh, all of that is part of what they're learning you know that 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 continues and it's part of it right especially for connor it's important for him to have these experiences out and and to learn how to function and to and to um um deal with like you the the sounds the movements the changes the all of it you know yeah so that is part of it and i do understand what you're saying is that you know He's working on it. Yeah. So by the time you get there, you've already dealt with quite a number of things. And then you go, you get a drink. Yes. And... I uh, found out that the... Uh, the drinks themselves... Uh, it was just Coke. I, I think it was. Cherry Coke? I, I don't know if even, they even put anything in it to make a Cherry Coke. But uh, it did not taste right or good at all. Mm-hmm. And then the gentleman said that they were having a problem with it. That With, with the syrup to make it, yes. Yeah. And at, around that time, uh, we... we I, I, we were at a Mexican restaurant, mm-hmm. and I had found something that looked really good. 
and a lot of the words that they were using were Spanish words in mm -hmm. in the menu itself mm -hmm. that didn't really explain what any of the things were. Right. And one one of the things that I that was it was the sauce that was on the enchiladas I'd ordered. Mm -hmm. Uh, tomatillo sauce or something like that. It had tomato in the word. Mm -hmm. So you thought it was going to be a red sauce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. your food came out, not only did it have the wrong sauce, so it didn't look like what you thought it was going to be, but it also... I, I put the fork into the sauce just to mm -hmm. taste it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he just gave you the shivers right now. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it had some stripes of sour cream on the top. Which... You can't stand. And which sour cream was not mentioned whatsoever in the... Right. In the... Which, and, and oftentimes, in on Mexican dishes, they'll do that. Yeah. Um, so most of the time, we're kind of ahead of the game, right? Yeah. Like we say no... Sour cream. Right. But also most of the time it says it somewhere, right. maybe not in the specific thing, but sure. on, like at the top of the of the thing underneath where it says, like, in oh, this case cream. enchiladas, mm -hmm. comes with right. sour cream and, yeah. or whatever on it. Yeah. It didn't have that mm -hmm. anywhere on it. Mm -hmm. Which, to be honest, I didn't even notice that there was sour cream on it until... You pointed it out to me, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, "Wait a second, because it's literally a. It was like it was. It came from a tube or something like that. Because yeah. it was just. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I'm like, how did I miss that? <laughs> but uh, before the before the meal had come out, uh, Dad could see I was starting to get overwhelmed with stuff. Uh, because I was not able to even really look in the direction of Connor at this point. Connor was on the opposite side to the right of me. Mm -hmm. And just because it was... It was making me very... Uh uncomfortable, very, uh... Agitated. Yes, that's, that's, yes. Mm -hmm. And... So I was trying to explain to Dad what was going on, why I was feeling like that, and Connor would interrupt me every three words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and... So I asked you if you would just rather go. Did I asked, first of all, do you want something else to eat? Do you want something different? You can get something different. We can just take that with us and you get something different. All right. And at that point, right before uh, you had asked me that, I, and right after I had done, done a little taste test, mm -hmm. The taste was was not good at all mm -hmm. for this for the sauce to me at least. Okay. But right after that, the smell of it hit me, mm -hmm. and I could not uh, stomach anything at that point because of that and because of all of the agitation and stress mm -hmm. I was feeling, and I was really getting overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's... I think it's very important that you have an escape route. Yeah. So that whatever situation you're in, and especially with a family like that, mm -hmm. that you have that option of removing yourself from the situation. 
So I don't care if we're here and you need to go into the bedroom to get away from everybody, or right. if we're out at a restaurant. If it's not working for you, then it's not working. Right. And I think that it doesn't really matter what age you are. I think that there's got to be that that care given and that respect that you're shown that if it's not working for you, that that matters. Right. And that you need to have an opportunity to remove yourself from the situation. Right. And and I would like to point out something, and that is that I don't know if it looks like this to you guys from an outside perspective, but to me at least, I'm recognizing that the way I feel is similar to what a panic attack might might feel like. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if I've ever had a panic attack. I'm, I'm I know I've seen it, but I yeah. The way it's been described to me is very very similar. Mm-hmm to how I feel whenever I get overwhelmed. I, um, I, could, I would say that it's kind of similar. You, you've worked out how to handle yourself in such a way that I think maybe if people didn't know you, they wouldn't know anything was happening. I know you because I felt a change happening. You're sitting right next to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm recognizing that Connor is over there. And even though I tried to give some separation, it didn't help because he was right across. What should have happened is you should have been allowed to sit on the side. And and, and just so that you know, mm-hmm. I didn't know that you needed to sit on that corner like that. I thought all this time that it was because you were going to hit somebody with your elbow. I didn't realize that that's because that's where you're more comfortable, like angles and everything. This had not that had nothing to do with it this time. I, with I, I, I tend to sit on the right side of a, mm-hmm. of a side of a table mm-hmm. because you guys have always put me there because of my elbow. elbow. <laughs> and, and this time I thought I had a built-in safeguard, <laughs> which was just to scooch away from you, give you most of the space, right? Yeah. Um. Right. And you, in the future, what needs to happen is that, and would be best if Connor was on the same side of the table that we are, a few down, so you don't have to see his behavior. Right. Because that's another issue I have is uh, that occurs, is that I see what he's doing, mm-hmm. and... I know that I can either help him or get him to stop. And it's it's so difficult. Well, what's so difficult about it too is that the things that you need to get him to stop are not necessarily at a level that the rest of us feel he needs to stop. Right. And because he's six, and he's learning, and and has learned at this point, you know, manners, how to behave when we go out, you know, um, don't climb all over the place. You don't... Basically, in, in my perspective, he did pretty good last night. I'm not... I'm not... I don't have those sensitivities, though, and the same as you. So the things that that make you um, have a very uncomfortable time are not the. It's not to that level with me. Right. And so that doesn't do you any good. Saying that doesn't do any good because it doesn't stop it from aggravating you so much. Yeah. And then you start to feel at agitated and then it just adds to this whole experience that you just had so what we need to do from now on is get you in that corner that you are comfortable in so that elbows can fly Hmm. have him on the same side but further down so you're still going to hear him but you will not have any 
reason to have to step in and do anything about it. Right. You bring up a really good point, though, that there are some uh, issues that I see not not even just with Connor, but just in general, that really contribute to m me feeling overwhelmed. Because I see something that other people don't necessarily consider to be out of line or out of place. Or negative. Or negative. Mm-hmm. And it's when I try and bring attention to it, and it's not it's not brushed off or as being nothing or anything like that. It's. that I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And that ag agitates me so much mm -hmm. that seeing, it, seeing not just that, but multiple instances of that happening mm -hmm. all at once, or not all at once, but in the same seeing multiple instances of that in the same mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. is absolutely overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Right. And, right. And so, so the situation, there's this little dude that has all kinds of energy, that has a hard time s sitting in his seat, mm -hmm. that has chips and salsa that make him so very happy. Mm -hmm. um, he has his ice water there. Yeah. And he's notorious for being a chatterbox. Mm -hmm. He talks constantly. And so I can see that the bouncing, you know, the, 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 the bouncing that he does, even though he was on his seat... He Most of the time. <laughs> various forms. Was he sitting on his bottom? Was he sitting on his legs? Were, was he standing next to his seat? And, you, you know, it was right. all over the place, constant talking. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I see that that can be agitating for you. But, but that came in conjunction with your other senses that were completely being overwhelmed yeah. Beginning with um, a sudden change when you get off work. Oh, I'm going out to eat. Yeah. And you didn't, we didn't give you notice right. that we thought, well, we just kind of blew it. I thought, <laughs> you know, right, right. There was a similar situation that actually occurred a month ago or so. Um, it was shortly after uh, my last D and D game had concluded, mm -hmm. so I was trying to find a game into a new one, into a new group, mm -hmm. and. I had heard that that there was a game or a group that was meeting that might have space and it was at the same place that I that I go to the comic book store. The same group of people? No. Okay. Um but I so so uh I went there. Mm -hmm. I did not have Assurances I would be part of the, part of any game, mm -hmm. and on that particular day, uh, there there is another group that actually plays in the same room, mm -hmm. 
and they had they had, they had offered for me to join them. It was a different game system uh, than what I was expecting to play. Um, and the group that I was looking for was late. So I didn't even know if they were going to come in. And I was feeling a little bit pressured to join this game in the different system. That what, what does that mean, a different system? Uh, rule system. Okay. Yeah. So it's D&D. &D. No. Dif oh, okay. D&D &D is one branch of a tabletop RPG. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, so it your has, your group was not there, and you didn't know if they were going to be there. I wasn't even a part of the group. Okay. But that was the group I was looking to ask. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, they had arrived late, and as it was, they weren't even going to be playing D and D that night. Okay. Uh. I was already starting to feel overwhelmed with the whole situation uh, of they probably didn't mean it as such like the other group probably didn't mean it as such to to try and push for me to join them but that's what it felt like to me okay. and so it was very stressful to me to not only expect to play one one rule system, mm -hmm. being asked to play in a different rule system, mm -hmm. while waiting to see if the other group would even show up. Right. A lot, there was, that was an awful lot of uncertainty. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they, sh they did show up. I say they, it was a few of them that showed up, not, a, not even enough for a whole game. Mm -hmm. And they knew that they were going to try and play something in the interim, just the board game or whatever, that I wasn't interested in at all. Okay. Um, with that said, uh, I was invited to join their D&D &D game, their D &D game that wasn't playing that night. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So the future, for the future, yes. will be a part of that. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, they asked if I wanted to join the game that night, uh, which was the board game. And at that point, I was almost jittery with how, how much anxiety I was feeling, mm -hmm. how stressed out and overwhelmed I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And... I explain to them I'm as best I could at least that I that I was really feeling overwhelmed right now with everything I have to go home mm -hmm. for a night but that I did want to try and join them oh, mm -hmm. and uh, when you were feeling that way <clears throat> excuse me was it was it difficult for you to get those words out and express yourself since you were feeling that way? Yes. Yes. It's it becomes much more difficult to articulate what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Uh whenever I'm feeling so overwhelmed. And what ended up happening was I was able to go home and I was able to join their group. Oh, good. And so the the next week I had gone with them and played with them. Mm -hmm. And the following week I did as well. And then a couple of the players just randomly dropped oh. at that game. Mm -hmm. And... Is it a non-game now? No, it's still a game that meets every week. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to go in about three weeks. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, 
one time I was I was feeling sick to my stomach. Mm-hmm. One time I was it was right after, it was right after Nana. And oh. Yeah, just all kinds of stuff just coming up like that. And <clears throat> so stress feels it, it can come from from different places. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um. For you, once a stress starts. Does it kind of snowball, or are you able to kind of deal with a stress and then move on like that's in the past and it's separate, or does it does it have an effect on the rest of your experience or your evening or in your decision making? I just ask you three things. Sorry. Does it affect? I. You got it? All right. The answer to all that is no. It's different. Uh, the, that's the only reason I can answer all okay. of them at once is because okay. that's not how I feel. Okay. Elaborate on that. Um, whenever I become overwhelmed... I, if I stay in that situation, I can't move past it. Okay. I cannot. Mm-hmm. It takes me leaving a situation, mm-hmm. whether I come back to it or not, mm-hmm. and a bit later, is it doesn't matter. I have to leave the situation. Mm-hmm. And... In the case of of the game, I had to go back home because leaving that area, mm-hmm. I was still in in the game shop. Mm-hmm. You just needed to leave altogether. Yes. Right. Uh, Does it always help when you remove yourself from a situation? Does it always help to begin to help you to feel better? Yes. That said, there are occasions where I am unable to remove myself from a situation. A perfect example would be uh, whenever I went to a I think it was a youth retreat or something like that. I was there. I had no way to get home or anything. But I was stuck in a situation that I couldn't leave. And I didn't have a cell phone at the Mm -hmm. time. So I couldn't call you guys or anything. And Mm -hmm. I didn't get a cell phone until until like my freshman year in high school. Yeah, I'm looking at you like that because I'm trying to think there... That's a. I don't remember. I don't remember that. So you, you, regardless of the situation, though. Mm-hmm. Whether we're your. That, that I'm saying that was a specific example, though, that explained that it doesn't. That if I'm unable to leave a situation, it, it cannot be resolved until I'm able to, leave. And then you just begin to shut down. Yes. And so it does not get better. So the answer, so for example, if I was just to tell you, nothing you can do, might as well just deal with it. Not helpful. (laughs) At all. Right. Yeah, because it's it's not how it works. Right. Telling me something like that, regardless of the situation, does not help. Yes. Yeah. Uh... Whether I'm overwhelmed or not, that does not help. (laughs) Right. Um, So that's that's interesting. So basically what you're saying is that you have to be able to remove yourself from a situation where you're feeling this unbearable pressure. Yes. and, And that I think that you've described on your body. 
this pressure, 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 just pushing like a vice. Yeah. And this uh, uh, anxiety. Yeah. You've the the way that you re- get relief from that is to be out of the situation. Right. And when, they're, for example, in school. Whenever I was in high school. Uh, even some college classes, things like that. Mm-hmm. But especially in high school, there were times where I would not be allowed to leave the classroom, mm-hmm. which was uncommon because at the time I did have an IEP, Individualized Education Plan, mm-hmm. that essentially said I could. If I was overwhelmed and everything, yes. I, could, I could take a step out. Mm-hmm. There were occasions where that did not happen. Mm -hmm. And it made it very difficult for me to be there. Mm -hmm. Not just at, not just during then, but also in the future. Yeah. Because I, it was difficult for me to put myself back into a possible situation like that again. Mm Mm-hmm. And so it's not something you can just snap out of. Right. I mean, this is not something where you just, oh, we'll think about something else. Or move your, change your seat. Or, right. you know, it's not what you're talking about. I, I believe, I'm just going to, I'm going to put this into words because I think this is what you're talking about. In the past, I've asked you an awful lot of times, how does it feel in your, on your body, in your body? Mm-hmm. Does it feel, and when we call this shutting down, and you've de- ex- described this as it's actually the opposite of shutting down. It's intense and extreme discomfort. And you feel that in your body. Yes. And sometimes it's like a tingling and it's just not good. Right. You feel like, uh, I'm putting these words here. It's like, I would imagine it feels like you just got to run away from that. Like, you just have to... You know, if, if we talk about, oh, just step, get somebody to step out and get in some fresh air. Well, it's that multiplied because it's, it's, um, overwhelming. Right. And it also makes me feel like, as you're describing it, almost kind of desperate, like you can't, it makes me feel like you can't breathe. Right. Now, you haven't said that. Right. But as you're describing it, it's just, to me, I'm t- interpreting this right. as, a trapped feeling. A trapped claustrophobic feeling, yes. Yes. And 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 as you're in that, it feels to me like as I'm hearing you like you 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 haven't said you can't breathe. And I see that you are breathing when yeah. you're doing this, so it it's it's a mental mm-hmm. feeling of claustrophobia. Yeah. 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 And it's It's very difficult. Do you have that experience every day at some point or not necessarily? No, not necessarily. Okay. Um, usually it, in any situation, it takes multiple different instances. I, I'm using these terms instances and situations mm-hmm. being like, imagine a movie scene. Uh, uh, where you're like, in a partic- in any given scene in a movie you ha- you might have multiple different shots within a scene mm-hmm. the scene is what i would call a situation sure whereas an instance is let's say each shot within the scene okay so if there if there are different in any situation or scene there could be multiple instances mm-hmm. that there are multiple uh shots in each scene mm mm-hmm. But not all of them would become an instance. 
Got it. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Are you yeah, that was really, no. I'm, that was that was a very clear explanation. Yeah, good job. Thanks. I hope it. I hope yeah. I got it across. But <laughs> seriously, I didn't know where you were going with that, so I had to. Right. Yes, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're saying. So there are variables. And and because of that, it's not going to always be the same. Right. Um, right. Right. And is there anything else that we can do to help you? Other than just having that... I mean, we, we, we all have this clear understanding that when you need to remove yourself from a situation, that's exactly what needs to happen. Right whether we're out to eat or you're off doing something that you typically really enjoy. Right. And a perfect example that many others that can, would be able to relate to mm -hmm. is if you're riding with someone in a car mm -hmm. for a long distance. Mm -hmm. If you start having that... I say you... If someone in my situation mm -hmm. was the passenger and started having that situation in the car mm -hmm. and couldn't get away, right. it is so difficult to deal with. And then it just builds up and builds up and builds up, right? Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. And a lot of times, let's say it's the driver that that is the main source of those <laughs> instances. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, they don't realize that they're causing these instances. You used to have to ride with somebody that didn't pay attention. Oh, my gosh. And it was so upsetting to you. Oh, my gosh. It, it, would, it would create that that feeling in you. And then it would just make you a nervous wreck. Well, you know. No pun intended. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. It, that was so difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, he, and it, it was so. It was so frustrating too in that situation. Mm -hmm. That particular uh, driver, if I would bring it up to his mm -hmm. to their attention, mm -hmm. I've already said no. His attention, mm -hmm. you know. Like, oh, don't worry about it. Right, right. Like it's no big deal. And you're like, uh, dude, you're in, you're in you're the in somebody else's <laughs> lane. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're in right? oncoming traffic lane. What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, so you do? Right, right. Oh, well, my gosh. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's interesting because, you know, for 33 years that, you know, I've been trying to do things that, to you know, that would be to your benefit. And, again, just... Aren't I 34? 30... No. <laughs> no? Oh, yeah, this year I turned 34, don't That's I? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one year, I just left you to your... Yeah. <laughs> um, but I see that even after all these years of me, you know, kind of just doing things and, and, and like, built into that yeah. is the things that matter to you. So to try to make it as m m the most comfortable for you. Right. Well, even then, like, think about it. Going out to dinner... Everything was just stacked against you that, you know, we participated in, that I participated in. I can't say it to anybody else. Me. I, you know, didn't give you advance notice and, and you know, put you in a position and then, who you know, in the vicinity of Connor. And, yeah, so I, I see that there are some things that are, you're just able to take care of. We've talked before about how your your glass needs to be on a certain side of your plate. Right. And I can just move it myself at this point in time. Yes. There's some things you can't overcome. And that's what you're describing right now. And what's interesting, too, is that when you think about going out to eat, I mean, who knows at this point, but had you been giving a, given advance notice, would that have changed things? If you had... If if I had gone and waited outside so that you saw me there when you pulled up, would that have changed things? You know, or your dad, so that you knew you were in the right place. 
would sitting you on a different side of the table and you know would that make a difference would you not having to see connor and and his bouncing around <laughs> made a difference it, it's it is it can feel very complicated and overwhelming with all of the adjustments that would you know that that hmm. there's just so many things right there like how would how do we know well we don't know uh, and the only thing we can do is in the future to be mindful of those things and and help to not get you in that situation right because you did a fantastic job when you needed to get out of there you were out of there yeah and ideally though we want to do everything we can to not create to have me in that situation yeah, yeah. not to create it to begin with right yeah uh, one thing that uh, Vug uh, mm -hmm. actually talked to me today mm -hmm. about this. Oh, okay. And she wanted to make sure that whenever I had to go, that she wanted to make sure that I didn't perceive it as you kicking me out of the dinner. Oh. And uh, she just wanted to make sure that I knew that that was not what happened. And oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah, because it was me that I you, I you, got you up and yeah, you you pushed for me to be able to have that that possibility of leaving the I situation. I offered that to you, whether or not yes. What I made two two separate offers is that you get an entirely different meal. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about this one. We mm -hmm. get you an entirely different meal. And I could see that you were just agitated. Yeah. Which and, was, do, do you want to go? Do you need right, to go? Right. One, the last instance in that whole thing was right after you offered for me to get something else, everyone else, or uh, you, Haley, and Dad, all were offering different ideas for what I could get instead mm -hmm. when I was already put off from eating. Correct. And that, right, right. Which wasn't something that you guys could have known. Mm -hmm. Because I hadn't said anything yet because it had just happened. Right. Right. So. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. So, yeah, I didn't even think about that that could be a perception that I just kicked you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so it, right. it's, I myself am aware enough to know that you were looking out for me, mm -hmm. that you were trying to be helpful to, to give me that, that out. Well, yeah, because I didn't say, we'll, we'll just go. What I said was, do you need to go? And then I got up and let you out of the booth. Yeah. The, honestly, this is one of the cool things about our family, is that with all of the situations that have come up because of me having autism that have happened with me growing up with your guys' understanding and trying to understand has made it so much easier not just on me but on you guys yes it's stressful I will fully admit that it's stressful for everyone for me to have autism. <laughs> but with all of your willingness to and attempts to understand why I am the way I am, why I do things the way I do, you guys have really done your best to accommodate me and my quirks and issues and all. Yeah. And Bug has actually said before that because I 
grew up with her the way that I am, having autism and all the mm. strings attached with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that her growing up, learning and dealing with that, mm -hmm. and trying to help me with that, mm -hmm. has, in a way, not dictated, but has influenced. In yes, that's the that's the word. Influenced mm -hmm. the what she wants to do with her life. Mm -hmm. And right now she is going to school for uh, nursing. Was, yeah, and wants to continue on to be a nurse practitioner. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she has told me before that. That was that I was partially, not to blame, but <laughs> but kind of, <laughs> uh, for her wanting to help people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Right. So, I'd, thank you. Yes. Oh, that was a nice thing to say. So thank you for saying that. I love you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well, I think that's it. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else to say today. Yeah. yeah that just, this might actually be our longest podcast, too. It could be. I don't know. You just made my, <laughs> my heart happy. So thank you for that. Yeah. All right. Oh. Everybody, thank you for hanging out with us. We yeah. appreciate you so very much. Um, check us out at sonyaking.com, if you would, and um, give us five stars if you feel like it. Yeah. That'd be great. And um, just um, hope you're having a, a, a happy day and um, take care of yourself. Um, hope this podcast helped. I think um, I'm after uh, all these years, I'm still learning about you and about autism and about what helps you and, and what doesn't necessarily, you know, make a difference. So it's, I just appreciate you so much, Josh. Thanks. All right, everybody. Hug each other. We'll talk to you next week. Love you. Bye.